Okay. All right, once again, welcome to the Kansas 4-H Rabbit Showmanship Zoom. I'm Kelsey Nordyke, your Ag Science 4-H Specialist, and joining me tonight is Eve Ryder. Eve is a 4-H'er from the Walnut Creek District, and I'm going to give her a chance to introduce herself just a little bit more. If you joined us last week, you got the basics of Rabbit Showmanship. If you missed last week's webinar, you can still catch the replay, and I will enter that web address in the chat, and you you guys are welcome to go ahead and watch that replay. That is on our animal science, our 4-H animal science webinar series page. And we have all of the webinars for the last year listed there. And so if you're in other animal projects, uh, those would be, or have an interest in other animal projects, those webinars would be appropriate and helpful to you. So with that, I'm going to mute off and pass the microphone over to Eve. Welcome everybody. I'm glad to see all of you here. Um, I see some familiar names. Um, so I'm excited to have you guys back. Um, welcome back to the Stromanship Clinic, uh, or welcome if you haven't been here before. My name is Eve Ryder. I am 15 years old. I've been doing 4-H for 10 years and been raising rabbits for six years, but only showing for two years because when we first got started, we only did like the county fair. And so in 2021, after COVID is when we started going to rabbit shows and doing the contests. And in 2022, I was the Kansas State Fair 13 to 14 rabbit showmanship grand champion. And so that was a really big accomplishment in my rabbit career, showing career. Um, I raised Polish rabbits. So rabbit showmanship is an opportunity for you as a youth to get to show your knowledge of rabbits and your rabbit and then its breed and you show that to a judge. And according to the ARBA showman guidelines is an important skill that can be used to learn more about your rabbit and the rabbit judging process. So something new that we're gonna be talking about today is a disqualification versus a fault. A disqualification is one or more defects, deformities, or blemishes that render a rabbit ineligible for competition. There are general disqualifications that affect every breed, and then there are also breed-specific disqualifications that can affect some or all of the breed, and those are specified in the standard of perfection. Some examples of general disqualifications are mismatched eyes, malocclusion, broken tail, missing toenails, conjunctivitis or weepy eyes, deviated spine, and any form of parasites, lice, mites, fleas. And then a fault is a deviation from perfection or physical imperfection. So when the rabbits are judged, they are judged from a out of a score of 100 and each breed has a different um, way they're scored. Like there, there's some breeds have more points for markings, like the spotted breeds, um, and some have more points for the body, like the commercial breeds. And so if the rabbit has a fault, it gets some points taken off its overall score, which can get it a lower placing in its class. Um, a lot of the faults are more breed specific than disqualifications, but there is some general faults like fur condition, open coat, which is where the coat is um, starting to molt so it's not in its best condition, um, chop body type, which is where the um, hindquarters of the rabbit just kind of slide right off instead of like sloping like you would want it to. And then each breed has its own faults that go with its body type, with its fur, and with its markings. So as we go throughout this, I added just a lot of disqualifications that are general into the showmanship um, performance or routine that I have here on my slides. But if you would like to add a little more than that, then you can send in the chat your breed and I at the end can go over in my standard and find some of the more breed specific faults 
they can help you get a little hair more above your competition. And as a reminder, this is what the score sheet looks like. You're being judged on the way you carry your rabbit and then the different things you say about each body type, your knowledge, your actions, and also your appearance and handling. And even your rabbit has a few points in there. So I want to make sure that you look nice and doing your showmanship and that your rabbit is well groomed. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the supplies you need. I went over this last time. If you weren't there, you're going to need a carpet square or show table so that your rabbit can be used to um, being shown on that type of surface so they know when they're there that it's time to be shown. Nail clippers to make sure your rabbit's nails stay well trimmed and they pose better when their nails are not excessively long, so that helps with that. A lab coat or a white long sleeve shirt that prevents scratches and gives you a professional look when performing. A rabbit, of course, and then a brush, because that helps your rabbit get used to being handled and helps handle shedding. Before you go to a showmanship competition, a few weeks before, you're gonna wanna make sure that you continue to go over your showmanship routine with your rabbit. And if you're not already, um, you'll want to start doing that and just working through that, making sure your rabbit is used to getting flipped over and getting carried, um, and make sure you're brushing and taking proper care of your rabbits so that they will also look nice in the competition. Um, a few days before competition, you want to trim your rabbit's nails and make sure that your rabbit is healthy and ready for competition. If your rabbit is molting, if its coat is open, um, or if it's starting to sneeze, you probably won't want to do your showmanship with that rabbit. So it is recommended that you have another backup rabbit that you also practice with so that just in case your one rabbit is sick or if it's molting, then you have something that you can still show and compete with. And then right before the competition, you're just going to want to make sure your nails are not crusty and dirty. And when you're doing rabbit showmanship, you do not want to have um, any nail polish because that will distract from your rabbit. You want to take off all any jewelry that you have because that'll distract from the rabbit. And then if you have long hair, you want to put it back in a ponytail or a braid or a bun just so it's out of the way and it's not getting in your way. And then put on your showmanship jacket or shirt and then brush your rabbit to make sure that it is ready. And then I have this part in here on how to pose your rabbit. I talked about that last time, but if you if you weren't there, then this can help. There's This is just the basics. Um, the compact breeds are gonna be breeds like mini Rex and um, the Polish like I have and those kinds. And if you do not know what body type your rabbit is, you can also ask that in the chat and I can answer that later. So the order of how you go through your showmanship is you carry your rabbit to the table and you are being judged on that. So I will talk about each of these points here in a minute, but right now this is just an overview. Then you have your introduction where you introduce yourself and your rabbit, talk about the ears and the eyes, on both sides, the back, body type, all that, and the fur. And then you flip your rabbit over, which I'll go over because that is a very tough part of your showmanship. And then nose, teeth, then the front legs, belly, the back legs, the sex, and then finally the tail. And then um, at the end of your showmanship, the judge will have some questions for you to answer, whether that be about your rabbit, different rabbit body types, um, or even how you care for your rabbit. So when you're carrying your rabbit to the table, you the technique to use is you carry it like a flock, like this guy is doing where it's tucked into your arm so it feels secure. And then you use your other arm to make sure the rabbit feels supported because if your rabbit does not feel comfortable and supported, it is more likely to try to scratch you or try to get away. And that is not what you, what the first impression you want to be when you're walking up to the table. Um, so then when you get to the table, you just 
lightly place your rabbit on the table and then start posing it. And then you're also going to want to do that same carry when you are walking away from the table at the end. So on your introduction, you want to introduce yourself, say your name, how old you are, and then if it's a 4-H show, how long you've been in 4-H. And I like to say how long I've been raising rabbits. So my introduction for myself goes like this. Hi, my name is Eve Ryder. I'm 15 years old. I've been in 4-H for 10 years and showing rabbits for six. And then you introduce your rabbit. You say your rabbit's name, its breed, its variety, and variety is the same as color. And then you say if it is a buck or a doe. So my showmanship rabbit, his name is Neo. He is a chocolate buck Polish. And that's how I would introduce him. It's pretty basic. And then for a hair above the competition, you can add information about the breed and its history, or just a fun fact about your rabbit's breed. So my brother, he shows Havana's. And in his introduction, he says um, that the Havana's got their name because they looked like the Cuban cigars. And so that's just a fun little fact. And you can find those by just doing research. A lot of the rabbit breeds have their own specialty club and those clubs will have a website that will have information about the breed and its history. Um, so you can find any of that there. Or the rabbit's origin, like the Polish rabbits didn't actually come from Poland. They actually came from England and then they were brought to America in 1912. So that's a detail that I added into my introduction that gave it that little head, that little hair above. Moving on, you do the ears. And the way I do it is I do one ear, one eye, and then switch to the other side, do the ear and the eye, and then do the body and the fur. That's the way I do it. You can do it however. I find it easiest to start on the side that has the rabbit tattoo, have that facing towards the judge. Every rabbit that you show needs to have a rabbit, a tattoo in its left ear for identification. So if you're going to a show um, and you have eight rabbits on the table that all look the same, that's how you distinguish them is from their tattoo. So you need to make sure before you're doing showmanship that your rabbit has a tattoo. A tattoo can be like two numbers, two letters. It could be your initials, or you could even put the whole rabbit's name. At one time I had a rabbit and in its ear it said Washington, the whole, the whole name. So it's, you can do whatever. And then you'll look in the ear to check for any mites. And you can even put like your finger in the ear and pull it out to make sure, um, make sure that your finger is clean to make sure there's no mites and then if the rabbit does have mites it's likely to have cankers which are scabs um, and crust in the ears that are caused by the mites so you want to check for both of those and then check the ear for torn or missing portions um, if your rabbit does have a torn or missing portion then that is a disqualification um, so your rabbit would not would be taken off the table and not be able to show so when you're doing your showmanship, if something is a disqualification, you'll say that to the judge. So when you're going through the ears, you'll read the tattoo and then you'll, you'll look in the ear and you'll describe to the judge what you're doing. So you'll say, I'm looking in the ear to check for any mites or any ear cankers, which are scabs and crusts in the ear caused by the mites. And if any are found, that is a disqualification. And then I'm checking the ear for any torn or missing portions. And if any are found, that is a disqualification. So it's just, you're describing to the judge what you're doing as well as doing it at the same time. Then you'll do the eye. And so you need to know what the proper eye color is for your rabbit. And you can also ask that in the chat and we'll answer that later. Um, there's five rabbit eye colors. I find it helpful, something I've recently added in my showmanship is saying all listing all the eye colors and then saying which one is the proper eye color so the eye colors are blue blue gray chocolate marble and ruby and then you'll check that the eye is healthy and has no discharge 
discharge is a sign of weepy eye or conjunctivitis, which is fancy for pink eye. So if conjunctivitis is a pretty long word for you, you can just say pink eye. And then if it is found, that is a disqualification. And then you also wanna check the eye for any cloudiness that could be caused by blindness. One time we actually had a little dwarf hoto and we brought it to a show and we didn't notice anything strange about it until we were about to put it on the table and we noticed that it had a little white spot in its eye. And so it was confirmed that the rabbit was now blind in that eye. Um, so that is something that can happen to a rabbit even well into its life. So you want to check for that. And then you'll do the same for both eyes and both ears. I repeat what I said on the one side, on the other side as well, just to make sure you're being thorough. Um, on, then you'll move on to the back or the body type. So tell the proper body type um, and then make sure you have it posed correctly. Something that's helpful is explaining to the judge how to how you pose your rabbit. So if you have a compact rabbit like I do, you explain that you want it to be as compact as possible. So you slide, you make sure the front feet are with the eyes and then you slide it forward. So the fronts of the hind feet are touching the backs of the front feet. And so that's something that is helpful to explain to the judges. And then I also list the seven body types. The seven body types are commercial, compact, cylindrical, upright cylindrical, high head mount, full arch, and semi-arch. And those are that's a lot, so that's not something you have to add, but it will give you a little heads up as you get older to add that in. Then you feel around the body to check for abscesses and check for straight spine. And if your rabbit has a deviated spine, then that is a disqualification. And then on the fur, you'll tell the judge what color or variety your rabbit is. And then with your hand, instead of brushing down the fur like you normally do towards the tail, you wanna brush the fur towards the he rabbit's head to show whether your rabbit has flyback or rollback fur. And if you don't know which one your rabbit has, I can also find that out for you later. And then you tell the judge which type your rabbit has. There's also standing fur if you have a silver fox rabbit. That is, that's unique to the silver fox rabbit. And then you also want to blow into the fur to check for any mites like lice or fleas. Um, and then you flip your rabbit over. And flipping over is a really hard part, and I can demonstrate that at the end if anyone is struggling with that. I just It takes a lot of practice for your rabbit to get used to flipping over. My showmanship rabbit, I he still fights me, and I've been doing showmanship with him for almost three years. So sometimes he's, he'll try to kick and flip over when I'm doing my showmanship. So you just have to make sure you're holding them firmly and if he flips back over, just take a pause, reflip him, and then continue on like nothing happened. That's the best tip I have. Um, and on this slide, I explain how to do it, how you just put your pointer finger in between the ears, then squeeze the rabbit's head, and then let, gently flip it over using your left hand to support the rabbit's body. And then you hold your rabbit on its back for the rest of the showmanship till the tail. So when your rabbit is flipped over, you start by looking at the nose. On the nose, you're going to look at it, check for any discharge, which is a sign of the cold. And when you're checking for the cold, you also want to check the insides of the front paws to see if they've been wiping off any discharge. And if they have, that is a disqualification. And then a, a fun fact about a rabbit is that they only breathe out of their nose. So if their nose um, gets blocked, then that can be fatal. So you wanna make sure to get that treated. But that is also something you would wanna tell the judge that will show up 
um, the knowledge you have of rabbits. So then you open the rabbit's mouth so you can see its teeth and then rabbits have 28 teeth. So you wanna tell the judge that the rabbit has all 28 teeth and you can really only see the four front teeth. So you're kind of just assuming that it has all its teeth. Um, there's really no way to see that it has all of them. And you wanna make sure that you, those four front teeth are not broken. And then you want to check for proper bite, which is where the top teeth, the upper incisors, they overlap the bottom teeth, the lower incisors, and check that the rabbit does not have malocclusion, which is where the lower incisors um, overlap the upper incisors or the teeth butt. And if any malocclusion is found, then that is a disqualification. And then you're gonna move on to the front and um, front back legs and the belly. So you're gonna start on the front feet. You're gonna to wanna to extend the front leg. So you'll feel at the joint and squeeze a little bit. Don't squeeze hard, just enough so that the leg extends and that's making sure it's not broken. Then you wanna feel up the leg um, to feel the rabbit's bones. And then you wanna count the toenails. On the front feet, they have four toenails and a dew claw. And then you wanna check that the toenails are not missing or mismatched. So sometimes on rabbits, on rabbits you want them to all have the same color toenails on all the feet. So if your rabbit has brown, has dark brown toenails and then out of nowhere there's a white one, then that's qualification. And then also if one of the toenails is broken so much that you cannot see it, then that is also disqualification. If the nail's just broken um, and you can still see it, then that's not a disqualification. It is a fault. Um, so if none are found or they're mismatched, it's a DQ. And then moving on to the belly or the abdomen, if you wanna be more professional, you can say that it's the abdomen. Um, you're gonna to wanna to feel it to make sure that it has no abscesses. And if it does have an abscess, then that is a disqualification. And then you move on to the back legs and you wanna do the same as the front leg, how you feel at the joint to extend the leg to check for breaks. And then you're also gonna to wanna to check for bow legs, which are legs that curve in outwards or inwards from the middle. And if, that, if it does have that, then that's a disqualification. Then you wanna count the toenails. The back legs have four toenails. They do not have a dew claw. And then make sure none of the toenails are missing or mismatched. And then on the back feet, you're gonna to want to check the hocks for, or the foot pads for sore hocks, which is the rawness of the foot pad or the hock. And that is caused by the rabbit rubbing against the wire. And that is especially a struggle if you have a big meat rabbit and it's rubbing onto the wire because it's heavier. Um, and that is a disqualification if it is bleeding or infected. And a way to prevent sore hocks is that is to put a resting mat in your rabbit's cage so it can rest on um, so it doesn't get irritated and get sore hocks. And then you repeat that on the other leg. And then there's, you have the sex of the rabbit. So you'll need to know if your rabbit is a buck or a doe. And then if it is a doe, explain that it has a vent. And if it is a buck, explain that it has a penis and two testicles. On bucks and does, you're gonna check for vent disease, which is a disease that affects both sexes and is indicated by scabby red in genitalia. And if that is found, that is a disqualification. And then if it is a buck, you'll wanna check for split penis. And if that is found, that is a disqualification and the rabbit can no longer be shown. And split penis can happen um, early in life or it can even happen as a result of an injury later in life. Um, I learned that because I had a rabbit that got split penis about 
a year and a half into its showing career. So that is something you want to check for every time. And then on the tail, you're well, I like to flip my rabbit back over onto its front feet because the rabbits don't really like being on their back. So when you can with the tail, you can also do that flipped over, but I like to just flip it back over onto its feet. Then you'll find the tail and you'll feel it and extend it to make sure it isn't broken. And then you'll check for a screw tail, which is a tail that is bent or twisted to one side. And that is a disqualification. And then bobtail, which is a noticeably shorter than normal tail. And that is also disqualification. And finally, at the end of your showmanship, you will ask the judge if they have any questions. And the judge will normally have a few questions. Um, the questions vary on difficulty depending on your age. But to prepare for questions, some good resources are the American Rabbit Breeders Association Standard of Perfection. Um, I would recommend having one even if you're just starting out showing rabbits. It's a very good start to learning about your breed and learning about rabbits in general. And then there's also the guidebook to raising rabbits in cavies. That one's very helpful. It teaches a lot about diseases and about care of rabbits. Um, and it's great for beginners. And then both can be found at the link I have there on the slides. And then, so in, I added a lot of the general disqualifications to the list. And that, but if you're interested in taking your showmanship a step further, and I would suggest adding more breed specific to disqualifications and faults into your showmanship. Like my Polish, the fact, I add the fact that their ears cannot exceed three inches and also they cannot have a dewlap. Those are disqualifications specific to the Polish. And then like on my chocolate Polish, I check for white spots um, because if any are found, then that is a fault for the chocolate Polish. Um, and so that just shows the knowledge that you have about your rabbit and its breed. And those can be found in the American Rabbit Breeder Standard of Perfection. So thanks for coming to the clinic. And now I'll answer the questions and see what we have. OK, Eve. We've had a few questions that uh, I've been able to answer as we've gone through, but just to confirm for us, the mini lop and the Holland lop, what type of body and fur do they have? The, um, the Holland lops are high head mount body type, and they just added the high head mount. It used to be compact, just post with the high head, but now they are the high head mount. So they're posed um, lightly on their feet. Um, and then mini Rex are compact. All the locks have rollback. And always refer to the American Rabbit Breeders Association Book of Standards because I did answer that question in the comments and I answered it incorrectly with the information that I had. So um, Eve gave you correct information. Um, Eve, what is what body type is a Rex? A Rex? We'll make sure just to triple check, but I, it's commercial. Oh, it's commercial body type. So it's posed a little bit different, not too different from the from the compact. Yeah. But since it's so big, they call it a commercial. Okay. And Brigham asks, how do you show a dwarf? Would that be a Netherland dwarf? Or a dwarf hoto? Ask the question because yeah, there's different. there's two different types of dwarfs. There's a dwarf hoto and a Netherland dwarf. So Brigham, if you could tell us which one you're asking about. How about Eve? Well, we're, why don't you address both of those, if you could? The Netherland Dwarf and the Dwarf Hoto. Okay. Give us the answer for both, just in case. Yeah, Netherland Dwarfs are high head mount body type, so they are posed similarly to the Holland Lop, 
with their pose, you want them to be posed with their body, like in the compact, but you want their head to be lifted up. Give me this little guy. I have a little guy here. So I'll show you him. And so you can see how he, he's a Polish, so he's posed like this compactly. The Netherlands dwarf, they're posed like that, but they're posed more like this, where they have their head up. So you, you want, you, you have to work on getting their head to look um, up. And so a tip on doing that um, is to put its feeder up higher. So it has to reach its head up to get to the feeder. And dwarf hotos are, aren't they compact? They're compact. So they're just posed in the little ball like I just showed with this little guy. Um, they're not shown too specifically. And then th the next question on here is when you're showing the sex of the rabbit, do you show the penis to the judge? And if so, what's the easiest way to do that? Um, when you do show it, you do you do expose the sex to make sure the judge isn't try, isn't judging you too closely on that. So depends on age. Yeah, for if you're like 12 and under, you're not judged too closely on that. But as you get older, you do want to expose the penis. You want to show it? Sure. Best you can here. Yeah. On that. Sorry, and so an the, another question while you're answering that, Eve, is how do you know the sex of the rabbit? So maybe you could explain that as you demonstrate. Yeah. So he, this is a buck rabbit. So I'm going to flip him over and I'm going to show you the sex. So that's we can't buy the camera. Yeah. So you can see he has his two testicles. And if they're under six months, it is very hard to tell what sex it is. So the best way is you see here between the tail and right there, there's a spot where you just, once you find it, you just press down and, oh. <laughs> and if it is a buck, the, it'll show the penis. But if it is a doe, it'll just kind of look like a little taco. Um, so that's how you do it. You just kind of use your two fingers and press down around that area. And so that'll expose that. Um, I don't know. Is that helpful? I think that so. And okay. I believe, Eve, wouldn't the ARBA have some information on their website that might be helpful as well? Yes. Okay. I'm sure they do. In this book, in this, you want to show this Yeah. Book? In this book, the um, official guidebook of raising better rabbits and cavies, they go more in depth about explaining how to sex rabbits even at a young age. Um, and so you can find more information in that book. That'll be more helpful. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the chat. And you said it's the official guide, guide for raising better rabbits and cavies, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe, I don't know if it's changed, but for a while it was what if you become an ARBA member that yeah. they send you to like help teach you about being a rabbit raiser. Yeah. I didn't, I so the ARBA yeah. would be a great resource, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And they also have information about the breeds on their website that you can find. Okay, perfect. And another question on here is how do you tattoo a rabbit? There are two different techniques that are most often used for tattooing a rabbit. There is a clamp tattooer which is where you have the letters um, and you put them in the order and then you have to hold the rabbit and you clamp it into the ear and it just leaves little spots of ink in the ear. Um, and that sometimes is more painful for the rabbits because it causes the rabbits to bleed. Um, and the other way is just like how we do it. We bought a tattoo gun off the pen. Yeah. The tattoo pen, you can get it off Amazon. I believe we got ours off BC Bunnies. No, rabbits. It's like no. um, I love rabbits or something. I don't know what yeah. it's called. Um, but there's different places you can get it. Um, Cam Camelop. Camelop, yeah. They, um, but it's just a normal tattoo gun. And then you can get it with a kit that comes with numbing spray, um, the different needles. 
and what I'm some of the extension offices though have the clamp. True. Bars. Some so of if the... you probably ask your agent, they might be able to help you get that done. Yeah. Check with your agent and see if they have a mm -hmm. tattooer. Um, yes. and then in the chat also is the question: do they have to be tattooed in order to show at the local fair? Always check your local rules. I believe most local rules will require that because it is also required at the state fair. And many local units try to um, prepare you for the state fair by having the same or similar rules at your local fair. Um, and Brigham asks, what ear do you tattoo? You always tattoo the rabbit in its left ear. And I'm going to go back up to this question. So Easton is asking, he says, I have a Rex rabbit, but the color is similar to a light colored harlequin, but with less of the dark or light color on the opposite sides of the face. I'm afraid the color will be a fault. Is this something I should be worried about? Um, Give me my standard. Possibly. Easton, okay. oh, yeah. do you happen to have a picture of your rabbit? Yes. You do. Great. Um, I'm going to put my email in here and you can send it to me and I will get it to Eve. Well, you can get it to Eve or, um, Kelsey, if you know, Bryony Smith, she would probably be the best resource to know if it's a show color by a picture or something like that. Perfect. Cause she's Perfect. a rabbit judge. Yes. I we're not that skilled. You know what I mean? Like she would know without a couple, she would know instantly. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and while you're looking that up, Eve, there was a question. Is a white long sleeve shirt okay for show? Yes. Okay. Yeah, a white long sleeve shirt, or we use white lab coats, white button up collared shirt. Um, anything just white and long sleeves is what you want because you don't want it to get scratched, and the white helps not distract from the rabbit. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, I'll let you check out that um, that question on the Rex, on the coloring, if you would, please. Okay, so on the Rex, there's a couple, do, do you know what variety it is? Because there's a couple different varieties. Um, is it like castor? I don't know. That would be a tough question. So Harlequin isn't, it could be broken. Like a, is it, is it a broken? I would assume The harder so. question is if it's, yeah, if it's a broken, then it could have different color kind of without being, because it's not a Harlequin pattern for a Rex. Yeah. Particularly. We're not the best to know right. about Rexes. Yeah, it's we're not. the exact color. I mean, Easton, depending on the broken. Okay, Easton, why don't you send, if you can send me a picture of your rabbit, I'll get it to Eve, but I'll also get it to Bryony Smith. Bryony is a former extension agent and she is a, a national rabbit judge and she knows lots and is definitely willing to help us out. So, um, okay, let's see. I'm gonna back up just a little bit cause I've missed a couple of them. Uh, what hair type is a Rex? The, the Rex, there, well, there's different, there's four fur types, there's wool, satin, Rex, and then normal fur. So the Rex and the mini Rex, they have the Rex fur type and then they have flyback fur. They have Rex type, the type of Rex. Yeah. Okay. And the flyback. Let's see. Um. I don't. I'm going to give everybody a couple more minutes to ask questions. Okay. I'm going to give everybody a couple more minutes. Maybe why they think of questions, maybe you give them your a couple tips on how what how to keep your rabbit healthy and happy over the summer once now that it's starting to get hot okay so while we wait for questions i'm gonna um talk about keeping your rabbit cool in the summer if your rabbit lives outside um our rabbits used to live outside so what we did to help keep them cool is we took 
like bottled water um, and we'd take the water bottles and then we'd fill them up, not to the top, but at least three quarters um, because water expands when it's frozen. So you don't want the water to explode in the freezer, but we'd fill that and then we'd freeze it overnight. And then once it started getting hot in the day around between 1030 and noon, we would put that bottle in the rabbit's cage and they could lay against it and it would help keep them cool. Um, and we used different, we had some rabbits that chewed through regular water bottles. So we used Gatorade bottles, um, even some like iced tea bottles. Um, and for bigger rabbits, even like the half gallon juice jugs um, worked for that. And then, um, so putting those in the cages with your rabbits and making sure, of course, that your rabbit always has access to fresh water and that your rabbit stays fed. Okay, um, one other question. How much hay should a rabbit be getting every day? Um, we don't give our rabbits hay. That's not necessarily um, something that they have to have, but um, we do give them some, occasionally we give them Timothy. You don't want to give them alfalfa um, past six months because alfalfa is good when they're um, growing and they need the nutrients and the sugars from that. Um, but Timothy, after that, um, I, I mean, I people that their rabbits have access to MDA all the time. So there isn't, um, I don't know that there's an amount um, that's healthiest, but just- You have to make sure it's not their main food. Yeah, making sure it's not their main food. Um, but making sure they have something to munch on is helpful to keep their teeth from getting too long, keep them healthy. Okay. Um, so William is asking if you can show your rabbit so they can get an idea of what a full showmanship um, looks like. And actually, Eve, what I'm going to have you do is you and I will connect and we'll record that like you're just like you're doing showmanship okay. at the fair and I'll post it. Um, I'll post it to the animal science uh, webinar page. Um, when your rabbit's ears are up, okay. does that mean it's happy or scared? I'm, kind of what breed? Yeah, if it's a lop rabbit and its ears are up, that means it has too much control over its ears and that in a competition, it'd probably get disqualified. Um, but if your rabbit's just, if its ears are like up and it's, if it stomps its feet and it looks like it's in a very tense position, then it's probably afraid. But if it's just like sitting there happily, like this guy over here, he's just, um, standing up and his ears are up and he's attentive, but he's not afraid. Um, so it's just about watching rabbit's body language and not necessarily all about the ears. Um, Very good. Okay, is there a good treat for rabbits? Not carrots. Not, definitely not carrots. Um, I mean, rabbits like carrots, but they're kind of like junk food, or like candy. Um, so in a little amount, like every once in a while, that's okay for them to have, but them having a big chunky carrot every day is not healthy. Mm -mm, not um, even once a week. Yeah, barely, not even once a week having a little bit of carrot. Um, I mean, we give ours hay to munch on. We also have a blackberry bush, and so they really like the dried out sticks of our blackberry bramble, um, Cheerios. Like well, Okay. Yeah, like a few Cheerios, plain Cheerios here and there. A few plain yeah, Cheerios. Not honey, not Cheerios, just plain Cheerios or even just oats, like whole oats. Mm -hmm. The um, only thing that we probably give ours every once in a while in the summer is like a cucumber peel. Oh yeah, cucumber peels or... That's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. And how much, how much are you supposed to feed your rabbit when it is seven months old? What kind? It depends on the kind of rabbit. Um, little rabbits, they normally get a half a cup a day.
day once they're over six months and they stop growing. But if it's a bigger rabbit, I know the amount is a lot more than that. So if it's a Rex, how much? Okay, Rex, you want to make sure that they do not get overweight. So for senior bucks, which is over six months, you want it to weigh seven and a half to nine and a half pounds. So depending on how much it weighs, or three quarters um, to a cup. yeah, three quarters to a cup probably. But if it weighs less than that, you want to give it a little bit more food, not like free feed it. I'm not saying to do that at all. Um, I'm just saying make sure it maintains a healthy weight and probably three quarters a cup to a cup a day would, isn't there like a, isn't there would like be a, healthy. There might be. There might, we need to look at that because I think there's especially like a formula, but that's kind of it. Half a pound, half a cup if it's under five pounds, more if it's more. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, where do you recommend getting a good hutch for a rabbit? Camelot. Um, hutches are hard for rabbits. If your rabbit's outside, I mean, a hutch is a good option as long as it has an indoor area. And I, I know... Um, we have hutch, we had hutches. We before. had hutches and we kind of built our own. I know Tractor Supply and Orslin and them have hutches like that, but the cage I would probably recommend is um, a cage from Camelop and then with maybe like a nesting box to go with that for your rabbit to go in when it's stormy if it's going to be outside. But I just know the cages from them are very secure and um, good quality. And then they also have the trays that collect um the rabbit's fecal matter and its pee um so that makes it easy to clean yeah you can read that. um next question okay. is are you supposed to shave your rabbit before you show it definitely not um maybe talk a little bit about last what we talked last time about bathing and preparing your rabbit for a show we talk about that. Okay. okay. So Actually, we... Eve, let in the in the um in in as we consider time, why don't we refer them to the last week's episode? Um so mm -hmm. yeah. So the short answer to the question is you don't shave your rabbit before you show it. Um, but Eve covered how to prepare and how to care for your rabbit's hair um, in our last webinar. And that um, webinar is on the Animal Science webinar page. And that link is included in the comments. Uh, how much is a, okay, so two weight questions. How much mm -hmm. is a Netherland dwarf supposed to weigh? And how much do how much should a Rex weigh before it is shown? And why don't you give us the weights for the different age classifications? So like junior and senior, if you would. This is the Rex one. Okay. The Rex mate and so the for Rexes, junior does are four to eight pounds. Junior does are four to eight pounds. And junior and then, does are under six months, correct? Yes. Yeah. So basically they should be four pounds then to make minimum weight. Yeah, minimum four pounds um, to be shown and then up to eight pounds. And then once they get, once a rabbit gets up to the senior weight for most breeds, they could just be moved up to a senior even if they are still junior age. So for senior does, your rabbit can be eight to 10 pounds and senior bucks, seven to nine pounds. And then for Netherland dwarfs, junior does are one to two pounds, and the same for junior bucks, one to two pounds. And then senior bucks and senior does are not to be over 2.08 pounds. Okay. And would you give us also the weights for Holland Lop and Mini Lop? Yes. 
And I will tell you, you can find this information with the American Rabbit Breeders Association as well. But since we're on here, we'll have Eve look it up for you as well. But always refer back to the American Rabbit Breeders Association because they're going to give you the most current rules. Yes. So for mini lops, junior bucks and junior does are three to six pounds. And then senior bucks and senior does are four and a half to six and a half pounds. And then let me flip to the Holland page. Ooh, go too far. Okay. Holland Lop, senior bucks and junior bucks and does have a minimum weight of two pounds. And then senior bucks and does cannot be over four pounds. Mm -hmm. And they will weigh them. Yeah, and um, they will weigh them. Yes, they will weigh them. Um, Yvonne is asking if we went over how to select a rabbit breed to show in the last webinar. Uh, we did go over that some. And if you have additional questions, Yvonne, uh, go ahead and reach out to me and I can get you in contact with, the, with either Eve or Bryony. But Eve did make some um, comments about what to look for uh, in, in, um, when choosing a rabbit breed. So. Mm -hmm. And we had, do you want to say? Oh, yes. Well, that about the food first, and then I'll say the other part. We had, um, we found more information about the Rex, about feeding. They said um, that a good rule of thumb for feeding is given for enough food that it can eat within about 30 minutes to an hour. So um, feeding them a cup of pellets at night for the Rex is recommended. Mm -hmm. And then if you are, if you are a person who is still looking for a rabbit for the fair or looking for something different, um, we did have one or two breeders reach out to us and say they still had a few for, they still had a few rabbits. So if someone is still looking for a rabbit for the fair, we did have a few people that we know still have a few quality rabbits that are for sale. So if Eve, did you, Eve has still gave her email last time and she can give it again. And if someone is looking for anything, we do have a few more people that do have some rabbits still available. Awesome. Thank you. Eve, will you go ahead and enter your email in the chat too? Yeah. Okay. Looks like maybe we're kind of winding down on questions. So once again, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, feel free to watch the replay. This will either be posted tonight uh, or um, first thing tomorrow on the Animal Science yeah. webinar page. And that link was posted further up in the chat. And let's see. Eve has her email right there. And I'm going to give you guys a second to... Uh, to write that down. There were a few of you that had some questions directly to me. Um, if you'll go ahead and email me directly those questions that I wasn't able to answer tonight as far as getting you some additional information for your agents um, or getting you in contact with Eve or with Bryony, send me an email. Uh, my email is posted further up in the chat. I'll put it in here one more time. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much, Eve, and thank you all for joining us. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And as always, if you have questions, reach out. And Eve, thank you again for hosting us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all for coming. I had a lot of fun being this, and I'm very glad that it can help a lot of you guys out there. So 